Here we're going to talk a little bit more about maximum stress or what we call the breaking stress, the breaking stress of materials as it relates to cables. So we're going to talk a little bit about cables as well. Now what does that mean breaking stress? Well here we have a couple of examples. For aluminum the breaking stress is 2.2 times 10 to the 8 pascals. For steel the maximum stress or the breaking stress is anywhere from 5 to 20 times 10 to the 8 pascals and of course steel is a mixture of metals that we alloy together and so there will be different properties for different reasons and so let's say we have a, some steel that has a maximum stress of 15 times 10 to the 8 newtons per square meter. Well that may still not mean anything to us. What does that really mean the breaking stress and what does that mean 2.2 times 10 to the 8 or 15 times 10 to the 8 newtons per square meter? Well what that means is let's say we had a really big cable. Let's say we had a really huge cable in such a way that the cross-sectional area, area was equal to one meter square. Now of course that would be a humongous cable. Typically we don't make them like that because that would be much too difficult to maneuver. If you want to make a big cable what we tend to do is make a small cable and then intertwine them, make a whole bunch of cables bundled together, make cable bundles which are much more pliable, they can bend a lot easier, we can work with them a lot easier and they give us an equivalent amount of strength if we put enough of them together. But Let's say for a moment that we had a big cable like this that had a cross-section area of one square meter and we're going to go ahead and apply a certain amount of force to that cable. We pull on the cable, so the cable of course that big would be pretty strong, but it would break anyway if we exceed the maximum stress. And so if we then unitize the cross-section area to one square meter, the maximum force that we can apply would be one, uh, 15 times 10 to the 8 newtons because it's defined by per square meter. So if this exceeds 15 times 10 to the 8 newtons, then the cable would break and whatever you hang from the cable would then fall down. Okay, so now typically we don't have big cables like that. We have tiny little cables like this with much smaller radii. Let's say we have a cable here with radius of one millimeter. That means a diameter of about two millimeters. Let's say it's made out of steel. And we want to know how much force we can apply to that. Of course, remember, force is then equated to how much weight you can hang from the cable. And weight is the mass times acceleration due to gravity. So we want to find the maximum force and then, of course, the maximum mass we can hang from the cable. Now, we just have to go do a proportionality. For a cable this big, we can hang this much force on it. So for a cable this small, we can hang this much force on it. This is basically a proportionality of the cross-sectional area, what it really comes down to. So the definition again for stress is equal to force divided by uh, the unit area. And so if we then want to find out what force is, and we want to make this into stress max, and then force max, and when that's what we're trying to find, right? We're trying to find the maximum force. We just have to rearrange the equation. Maximum force is equal to the maximum stress and then times the cross-sectional area simply by multiplying the A with the stress, the cross-sectional area. All right, cross-sectional area, of course, for a cable is equal to pi r squared. So I have to multiply this times pi and the radius squared and the radius was given to us as one millimeter. All right, let's plug in the numbers, see what we get. For steel, the maximum stress was 15 times 10 to the 8 newtons per square meter. We have to multiply that times pi and times the radius squared, that would be 0 0.001 meters squared. I'm drawing a little bit into the drawing here, made it a little big. Um, Notice the millimeter is one one thousand of a meter. So we square that and now we All need right, a calculator. Fifteen e to the eight times pi times point zero zero one squared equals and that gives us a force of four thousand seven hundred and twelve newtons. Hmm. Now, of course, most of us don't really quite understand what that is unless we deal with those units on a daily basis. So let's convert that to how much mass we can hang from it. And since we know, of course, this, of course, is force max. And since we know that uh, the force of an object hanging from a cable is equivalent to the weight of the cable, mg, that means that m is equal to the force divided by g, or in this case, 4712 newtons divided by 9.8. That would be meters per second squared. And that will give us kilograms, of course. So divide that by 9.8 equals, that gives us 481 kilograms. So that would be the maximum mass we can hang from that cable before it breaks. 
of course, convert that to pounds. The rough conversion from kilograms to pounds is about 2.2. So if we multiply it times 2.2, we get 1,058 pounds. 1,058 pounds. Now, of course, pounds is a force, kilograms is a mass, but we tend to use those interchangeably when we go from kilograms to pounds. All right, so that would be the maximum weight. So how do you make a really strong cable that has an equivalent strength of a cable like this? Well, what will you do is you take a whole bunch of these small cables and you bundle them together. Let's say if you make a bundle of 10 of these, there we go, and you bundle them all together like that, now you have a cable that is 10 times as strong as its individual strands of the cable. So if each cable can hold about 1,000 pounds, and now you make an intertwining strand, and if you look at it carefully, they tend to be kind of intertwined to each other. Like that, they kind of are rolled over each other, so they're bundled together like that. So if you have 10 strands, that would be 10 times as strong, so that cable could hold 10,000 pounds. Now let's say you take these bundles, you take 10 of those bundles and you bundle them together. So you tend to kind of intertwine them over one another like that. And each one of those bundles has 10 cables as well. And let's say you have 10 of those bundles all, I think you get the picture here when you start intertwining these cables all around each other. Now you have 10 of those bundles. If each bundle can hold 10,000 pounds and 10 of those bundles can hold 100,000 pounds. And pretty soon you realize you can make some really strong cables by just bundling a, a many, many of these small little um, wires together. So basically the single strand like that would be kind of a single wire. You bundle them together, you bundle bundles, and sometimes they bundle those bundles into even much more massive and bigger cables can, that can hold millions of pounds. So that's how we work with the breaking stress. And obviously it's a lot easier to make cables like this and deal with them than make a big cable like that. That would be kind of hard to do. All right, there gives you hopefully a pretty good understanding of what we mean by breaking stress.